Hi, everybody, and welcome back to part three of the Prismatic Heart Self-Love Challenge. My name is Alyssa Helfrey, and I am Prismatic Heart Intuition. I'm really excited to get into this again. We started with week one, looking at how we spoke to ourselves, writing it down, tallying the things that we say to ourselves so that we're aware of how we speak to ourselves. This is first and foremost in figuring out how to find the beliefs we need to clear to find the love for ourselves. The second week we talked about looking at patterns. So we looked at patterning, trying to see if we recognize the voice in our head, if we recognize the wording, to figure out where this belief may have come from. So again, I, like I said before, this is not a bashing. This is not to upset you. This is not to blame anybody. Oh, it's all their fault. This is merely a fact finding mission. So I know that sometimes digging into this stuff can bring up victimhood. We get triggered, we get hurt, we fall back into the woe is me, why did that happen to me? Well, what if I told you that victimhood was actually the first step to awakening? It truly is because when you realize there's something wrong, that's when you have the opportunity to change it. So staying in victimhood is where a lot of us humans have the problem. We figure, oh, I can't get out of this. I'm a victim. And so we stay stuck. But we're actually trying to evolve. We're trying to awaken. We're trying to get better. Victimhood is actually the first step towards awakening. Our second step, empowerment. You know how that feels. Like we're doing that right now. We're getting empowered. We're getting excited. We're seeing that we have control over our lives and we have control over our future. And that's the next step. This third step is surrender. Surrender usually comes when there's something that is out of our control. We lose a loved one. We lose a job, things that throw us out. And we realize that, you know, we are no longer in control and we really aren't in control of a lot of stuff in our lives. And so this, this is kind of a tricky phase because we can slip back into to the victimhood very easily, or we can move on and go through the surrender find the peace and the surrender, and move into enlightenment. Now, as human beings, we fluctuate back and forth between all of those all day long. It's just the way we work. So it's absolutely fine. There's no A, B, C, D. You know, you're not going to get to step four in enlightenment and be like, oh, I'm Buddha. I mean, you might. It happened. <laughs> it happens to people. If you talk to the Tibetan monks, you literally hear about them inhabiting their light bodies and leaving these bodies behind. It's fascinating stuff. But I want to get back to our self-love challenge. So back to the belief systems, you know, that victimhood, that those empowerment into surrender and into enlightenment, that is possible for every single human being on the planet if you're willing to do the work. And as we move through those stages, life gets easier. Even in the surrender stage, when we're forced to look at things beyond us, it is still possible to move into enlightenment, to stay in empowerment, but we have to figure out why we tick in order to do that. So did you know that between the ages of zero to seven, you're just a sponge. This is where your subconscious is forming. So from zero to seven, that is when our logical mind, our consciousness is learning. It's getting the information from the people and from the activity around us. But until we're seven years old, we're mostly subconscious. We don't have that logical mind to go back and forth. So we take everything in that we receive as truth. We are just these little open energy sponges. So can you imagine like when you're a baby and your mom is angry or something happens, you take that on as truth because it threatens your safety. So anything, this is how we learn. We learn like, am I safe? It all comes down to, am I safe? Especially at these ages, it's forming, but it's just a sponge at this point. So the people around you, the things that happen around you all influence your belief system. Now, 
We can I I don't know about you, but I can't remember a lot between zero and seven. But I do know some of my past history. So I can see now that my subconscious has glommed on to these occurrences as fact, when in fact they are beliefs, because my mind told me that I needed to believe this because it would keep me safe. So where in this, the, the two things I had you do, first we looked at what you're saying to yourself. Then I asked you to look at patterning. Who does it remind you of? You know, what does it remind you of? And again, we're not doing this to blame anybody. We're doing this as a fact-finding mission to uncover what it is we need to release so that we can get better and move forward in our lives. Believing everything as a fact is what we do until we're about seven years old. And then we start to discern, you know, we get into school, we're learning things like that. And so we start to learn how to discern, but until then we're just big sponges. And I can't, I don't know about you, but I can tell you as I look back into my life and the things that I would say to myself, I know who told me that. I can see where it came from. Was it a mean friend that was mean and picked on you and, and you really wanted to be friends with them, but you know, you, 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 they just never accepted you. So you started to accept that as you having self-worth issues or, you know, you had an abusive parent. There you go. So this is how the world looks in order to, or like abusive parent relationships. We watch these violent relationships between our parents and think that's how a relationship is supposed to go. So these belief systems are deeply ingrained in our subconscious and very, very hard to find sometimes until you start to dig in and do that uncovering work. So beliefs versus fact. Let's talk a little bit about that. Belief in is, is an acceptance that something exists or is true, especially without fact. So technically it's faith. Fact is something that is known or can be proven to be true. So these beliefs that have guided you, these beliefs that we're uncovering, these patterns that are starting to emerge, these wordings that we use on ourselves, where did they come from? Can you figure out where they came from, who they came from, what they came from, and who gave them to you? When I say gave, it's not like a gift. It's they kind of put it on you, you know. And and why do you have faith in them? Why do you have faith in them? That is one of the biggest questions that you're going to have to ask yourself as we get through this. Why do I believe this? Now the cool thing is you have at the end of this a very neat exercise, not this particular module, but the end when we get to the belief clearing to show you how to do this, but look at where the beliefs Look at what the beliefs entail and where they are guiding you. Deep beliefs that we hold dearly, whether they are toxic or healthy, are very hard to change. And our conscious and subconscious will fight to keep the patterns the same because the ego is all about safety. You know, the mind wants to be in the known. That's the problem. The future is unknown. That is one of the things that's like, we cannot have new beliefs and hold on to the old ones. We have to release the old ones because if not, they start to butt heads, you know? So we want to bring that to the forefront. We really want to start to look at these as, is this fact? Is this belief? Is this really what I want to believe is the next question. Sorry, my notes. <laughs> So we have to be willing to go into it with an open mind. So again, your next questions that I would like you to ask for part three of this, take that list of things that I asked you to write down that we say to ourselves and the notes you made about the patterning. And I want you to ask these questions. Where did they come from? Where did this thought, where did this feeling, where did this belief come from? Who gave it to me? Where? Who gave it to you? And the interesting thing about who is, there's this epigenetic, they call it, you know, ancestral trauma, where especially if you look at it because we're, we're these little sponges. So you can imagine, you know, 
your mother and father were sponges at one time too. And so they absorbed the information from your grandparents who absorbed from their parents, who absorbed for their parents. So you can see how ancestral trauma can be handed down through the generations all as a belief system. Now is the time, people, that we can change that and we can stop it and we can end the cycle. We can end this ugly cycle that we've been handed because you no longer have to believe anything you're told. You are allowed to believe what you want. I give you permission to believe what you want about yourself. Truth. So we're going to look deeply at those beliefs and why do you have faith in them? Why? I mean, really look into that. Did your parents tell you to? Did your church tell you to? Did your friend tell you to? You know, but but then really feel into that. And this is when we get into this discernment of yes or no, learning how our body tells us how to say yes or no. So you're, I want you to do that work, but I also want you to take a few minutes a day. If you aren't used to what yes and no feels like in your body, I'd like you to do this exercise as well. Take a few minutes in meditation. You don't have to, it's just two or three minutes. I want you to do some deep breathing, get into a nice relaxed state. And I just want you to say the word yes. Pay attention to the sensations you get in your body. Then say no. And pay attention to the sensations you get in your body. And go back to yes. And go back to no. And go back to yes. And go back to no. Because as you learn this, your body is the antenna for what is right and what is wrong for you. Your mind can get in the way. Because like I said, we've got all these filters in there based on beliefs and facts. So it's kind of hard for our subconscious to discern what the truth is. But your body never lies. Once you get used to the feeling of yes or no in your body, when you do this work, you will understand immediately if this is good or bad for you. So that is your plan for this week, okay? Until we meet next time. Where did they come from? Who gave them to you? And why do you have faith in them? And if you haven't done it before, I'd like you to learn how to sit in your own body and understand what yes and no feels like. I know that in my body, I have certain triggers and I know it's a yes and I know that's a no before my even my mind even gets into it. So please try these. Again, we are not blaming people. We're not trying to find blame to why we were victims, things like that. We're doing this so we can get better, so we can break the cycle, so that we can become these strong individuals and compassionate, self-loving people that we truly want to be. So my friends, good luck with this. I will catch you on part four. And I thank you all for watching. My name is Alyssa Helfrey. I am Prismatic Heart Intuition. If you are interested in working together, I do do belief clearings. I do coaching and I do intuitive readings. My information is at www.alyssahelfrey.com. All my information is above in the YouTube uh, bio. And I will catch you guys on the flip side. In the meantime, everybody take care of each other. I hope you're having a fabulous day wherever you are. Namaste.